An angel is generally a supernatural being found in various religions and mythologies. In Abrahamic religions, angels are often depicted as benevolent celestial beings who act as intermediaries between God or heaven and humanity. Other roles of angels include protecting and guiding human beings, and carrying out God's tasks. Within Abrahamic religions, angels are often organized into hierarchies, although such rankings may vary between sects in each religion. Such angels are given specific names or titles, such as Gabriel or Michael. The term, angel, has also been expanded to various notions of spirits or figures found in other religious traditions. The theological study of angels is known as, angelology. Angels who were expelled from heaven are referred to as fallen angels. In fine art, angels are usually depicted as having the shape of human beings of extraordinary beauty but no gender until the 19th century at least. They are often identified with symbols of bird wings, halos, and light. Topic. Etymology The word angel arrives in modern English from Old English angle with a hard G and the Old French angeli. Both of these derive from late Latin angelus literally messenger, which in turn was borrowed from late Greek angelos agulos, commonly transliterated by non-Greek speakers in its phonetic form angelos. Additionally, per Dutch linguist R. S. P. Beeks, angelos itself may be an oriental loan, like Angaros, Angaros Persian mounted courier. Perhaps then, the word's earliest form is Mycenaean a kro, attested in Linear B syllabic script. The rendering of Angelos is the Septuagint's default translation of the biblical Hebrew term Malach, denoting simply messenger, without connoting its nature. In the associations to follow in the Latin Vulgate, this meaning becomes bifurcated, when malloc or angelos is supposed to denote a human messenger, words like nuncius or legatus are applied. If the word refers to some supernatural being, the word angelus appears. Such differentiation has been taken over by later vernacular translations of the Bible, early Christian and Jewish exegetes and eventually modern scholars. Topic. Abrahamic religions Topic. Judaism The Torah uses the Hebrew terms milk lim malak, Elohim, messenger of God, milk yh malak, yhwh, messenger of the Lord, bani lim bin Elohim, sons of God and hqudzim hakad sim, the holy ones, to refer to beings traditionally interpreted as angels. Later texts use other terms, such as halaywanim, haalyonim, the upper ones. The term milk malak, is also used in other books of the Tanakh. Depending on the context, the Hebrew word may refer to a human messenger or to a supernatural messenger. A human messenger might be a prophet or priest, such as Malachi, my messenger. The Greek superscription in the Septuagint translation states the book of Malachi was written by the hand of his messenger, Angelo Angelou. Examples of a supernatural messenger are the Malik YHWH, who is either a messenger from God, an aspect of God, such as the Logos, or God himself as the messenger, the Theophanic Angel. Scholar Michael D. Coogan notes that it is only in the late books that the terms come to mean the benevolent semi-divine beings familiar from later mythology and art. Daniel is the first biblical figure to refer to individual angels by name, mentioning Gabriel, God's primary messenger, in Daniel chapter 9 verse 21 and Michael, the holy fighter, in Daniel chapter 10 verse 13. These angels are part of Daniel's apocalyptic visions and are an important part of all apocalyptic literature. In Daniel 7, Daniel receives a dream vision from God.
As Daniel watches, the Ancient of Days takes his seat on the throne of heaven and sits in judgment in the midst of the heavenly court. An angel like a son of man approaches the Ancient One in the clouds of heaven and is given everlasting kingship. Coogan explains the development of this concept of angels. In the post-exilic period, with the development of explicit monotheism, these divine beings, the sons of God who were members of the Divine Council, were in effect demoted to what are now known as angels, understood as beings created by God, but immortal and thus superior to humans. This conception of angels is best understood in contrast to demons and is often thought to be influenced by the ancient Persian religious tradition of Zoroastrianism, which viewed the world as a battleground between forces of good and forces of evil, between light and darkness. One of these is Hasidun, a figure depicted in among other places, the Book of Job. Philo of Alexandria identifies the angel with the Logos Inasmic as the angel as the immaterial voice of God. The angel is something different from God himself, but is conceived as God's instrument. Four classes of ministering angels minister and utter praise before the Holy One, Blessed be he, the first camp led by Michael on his right, the second camp led by Gabriel on his left, the third camp led by Uriel before him, and the fourth camp led by Raphael behind him, and the Shekhinah of the Holy One, Blessed be he, is in the center. He is sitting on a throne high and exalted. In post-biblical Judaism, certain angels took on particular significance and developed unique personalities and roles. Although these archangels were believed to rank among the heavenly host, no systematic hierarchy ever developed. Metatron is considered one of the highest of the angels in Merkabah and Kabbalist mysticism and often serves as a scribe. He is briefly mentioned in the Talmud and figures prominently in Merkabah mystical texts. Michael, who serves as a warrior and advocate for Israel, Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, is looked upon particularly fondly. Gabriel is mentioned in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 8 verses 15 to 17, and briefly in the Talmud, as well as in many Merkabah mystical texts. There is no evidence in Judaism for the worship of angels, but there is evidence for the invocation and sometimes even conjuration of angels. According to Kabbalah, there are four worlds and our world is the last world, the world of action Asiya. Angels exist in the worlds above as a task of God. They are an extension of God to produce effects in this world. After an angel has completed its task, it ceases to exist. The angel is in effect the task. This is derived from the book of Genesis when Abraham meets with three angels and Lot meets with two. The task of one of the angels was to inform Abraham of his coming child. The other two were to save Lot and to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Jewish philosopher Maimonides explained his view of angels in his Guide for the Perplexed 2, 4 and 2. This leads Aristotle in turn to the demonstrated fact that God, glory and majesty to him, does not do things by direct contact. God burns things by means of fire, fire is moved by the motion of the sphere, the sphere is moved by means of a disembodied intellect, these intellects being the angels which are near to him, through whose mediation the spheres move. Thus totally disembodied minds exist which emanate from God and are the intermediaries between God and all the bodies objects here in this world. Maimonides had a neo-Aristotelian interpretation of the Bible. Maimonides writes that to the wise man, one sees that what the Bible and Talmud refer to as angels are actually allusions to the various laws of nature, they are the principles by which the physical universe operates, for all forces are angels. How blind, how perniciously blind are the naive? If you told someone who purports to be a sage of Israel that the deity sends an angel who enters a woman's womb and there forms an embryo, he would think this a miracle and accept it as a mark of the majesty and power of the deity, despite the fact that he believes an angel to be a body of fire one-third the size of the entire world. 
All this, he thinks, is possible for God. But if you tell him that God placed in the sperm the power of forming and demarcating these organs, and that this is the angel, or that all forms are produced by the active intellect, that here is the angel, the vice-regent of the world, constantly mentioned by the sages, then he will recoil. Guide for the perplexed to, for. Topic. Jewish angelic hierarchy Maimonides, in his Yad HaChazaka, Yesede HaTorah, counts ten ranks of angels in the Jewish angelic hierarchy, beginning from the highest. Topic. Individual angels From the Jewish Encyclopedia, entry, Angelology. Michael, Archangel, translation, who is like God, kindness of God, and stands up for the children of mankind. Gabriel, Archangel, translation, God is my strength, performs acts of justice and power. Only these two angels are mentioned by name in the Hebrew Bible, the rest are from extra-biblical tradition. Jophiel, translation, beauty of God, expelled Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden holding a flaming sword and punishes those who transgress against God. Raphael, archangel, translation, it is God who heals, God's healing force. Uriel, archangel, translation, God is my light, leads us to destiny. Samael, archangel, translation, venom of God, angel of death. See also Malik Hamavet, translation, the angel of death. Sandalphon, archangel, translation, bringing together, battles Samael and brings mankind together. Topic. Christianity Later Christians inherited Jewish understandings of angels, which in turn may have been partly inherited from the Egyptians. In the early stage, the Christian concept of an angel characterized the angel as a messenger of God. Later came identification of individual angelic messengers, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel. Then, in the space of little more than two centuries from the third to the fifth, the image of angels took on definite characteristics both in theology and in art, according to St. Augustine. Angel is the name of their office, not of their nature. If you seek the name of their nature, it is spirit. If you seek the name of their office, it is angel, from what they are, spirit, from what they do, angel. Basilian Father Thomas Rosica says, Angels are very important, because they provide people with an articulation of the conviction that God is intimately involved in human life. By the late 4th century, the Church Fathers agreed that there were different categories of angels, with appropriate missions and activities assigned to them. There was, however, some disagreement regarding the nature of angels. Some argued that angels had physical bodies, while some maintained that they were entirely spiritual. Some theologians had proposed that angels were not divine but on the level of immaterial beings subordinate to the Trinity. The resolution of this Trinitarian dispute included the development of doctrine about angels. The angels are represented throughout the Christian Bible as spiritual beings intermediate between God and men. You have made him man a little less than the angels. Psalms 8-4-5. Christians believe that angels are created beings, based on Psalms 148-2-5. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts. For he spoke and they were made. He commanded and they were created. The Forty Gospel Homilies by Pope Gregory I noted angels and archangels. The Fourth Lateran Council 1215 declared that the angels were created beings. The Council's decree Firmator Credimus issued against the Albigenses declared both that angels were created and that men were created after them. The First Vatican Council 1869 repeated this declaration in Dei Filius, the 
Dogmatic Constitution on the Catholic Faith. Thomas Aquinas 13th century relates angels to Aristotle's metaphysics in his Summa Contra Gentiles, Summa Theologica, and in De Substantis Separatis, a treatise on angelology. Although angels have greater knowledge than men, they are not omniscient, as Matthew chapter 24 verse 36 points out. Topic: Interaction with angels. The New Testament includes many interactions and conversations between angels and humans. For instance, three separate cases of angelic interaction deal with the births of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 1 verse 11, an angel appears to Zechariah to inform him that he will have a child despite his old age, thus proclaiming the birth of John the Baptist. In Luke chapter 1 verse 26 the archangel Gabriel visits the Virgin Mary in the Annunciation to foretell the birth of Jesus Christ. Angels then proclaim the birth of Jesus in the adoration of the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 verse 10. According to Matthew chapter 4 verse 11, after Jesus spent 40 days in the desert, dot the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him. In Luke chapter 22 verse 43, an angel comforts Jesus Christ during the agony in the garden. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 5 an angel speaks at the empty tomb, following the resurrection of Jesus and the rolling back of the stone by angels. In 1851 Pope Pius IX approved the chaplet of St. Michael based on the 1751 reported private revelation from Archangel Michael to the Carmelite nun Antonia de Sinach. In a biography of St. Gemma Galgani written by Venerable Germanus Ruopolo, Galgani stated that she had spoken with her guardian angel. Pope John Paul II emphasized the role of angels in Catholic teachings in his 1986 address titled, Angels Participate in History of Salvation in which he suggested that modern mentality should come to see the importance of angels according to the Vatican's Congregation for Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments the practice of assigning names to the holy angels should be discouraged except in the cases of Gabriel Raphael and Michael whose names are contained in holy scripture topic the new church In the New Church, extensive information is provided concerning angels and the spiritual world in which they dwell from many years of spiritual experiences recounted in the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg. All angels are in human form with a spiritual body, and are not just minds without form. There are different orders of angels according to the three heavens, and each angel dwells in one of innumerable societies of angels. Such a society of angels can appear as one angel as a whole, all angels originate from the human race, and there is not one angel in heaven who first did not live in a material body. Moreover, all children who die not only enter heaven but eventually become angels. The life of angels is that of usefulness, and their functions are so many that they cannot be enumerated. However each angel will enter a service according to the use that they had performed in their earthly life. Names of angels, such as Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, signify a particular angelic function rather than an individual being. While living in one's body an individual has conjunction with heaven through the angels, and with each person, there are at least two evil spirits and two angels. Temptation or pains of conscience originates from a conflict between evil spirits and angels. Due to man's sinful nature it is dangerous to have open direct communication with angels and can only be seen when one's spiritual sight has been opened. Thus from moment to moment angels attempt to lead each person to what is good tacitly using the person's own thoughts. Topic. Latter-day Saints The Latter-day Saint movement views angels as the messengers of God. 
They are sent to mankind to deliver messages, minister to humanity, teach doctrines of salvation, call mankind to repentance, give priesthood keys, save individuals in perilous times, and guide humankind. Latter-day Saints believe that angels either are the spirits of humans who are deceased or who have yet to be born, or are humans who have been resurrected or translated and have physical bodies of flesh and bones, and accordingly Joseph Smith taught that, "...there are no angels who minister to this earth but those that do belong or have belonged to it." As such, Latter-day Saints also believe that Adam, the first man, was and is now the Archangel Michael, and that Gabriel lived on the earth as Noah. Likewise the angel Moroni first lived in a pre-Columbian American civilization as the 5th century prophet warrior named Moroni. Smith described his first angelic encounter in the following manner. While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday, when immediately a personage appeared at my bedside, standing in the air, for his feet did not touch the floor. He had on a loose robe of most exquisite whiteness. It was a whiteness beyond anything earthly I had ever seen, nor do I believe that any earthly thing could be made to appear so exceedingly white and brilliant. Not only was his robe exceedingly white, but his whole person was glorious beyond description, and his countenance truly like lightning. The room was exceedingly light, but not so very bright as immediately around his person. When I first looked upon him, I was afraid, but the fear soon left me. Most angelic visitations in the early Latter-day Saint movement were witnessed by Smith and Oliver Cowdery, who both said, prior to the establishment of the church in 1830, they had been visited by the prophet Moroni, John the Baptist, and the apostles Peter, James, and John. Later, after the dedication of the Kirtland Temple, Smith and Cowdery said they had been visited by Jesus, and subsequently by Moses, Elias, and Elijah. Others who said they received a visit by an angel include the other two of the three witnesses, David Whitmer and Martin Harris. Many other Latter day Saints, both in the early and modern church, have said they had seen angels, although Smith posited that, except in extenuating circumstances such as the Restoration, mortals teach mortals, spirits teach spirits, and resurrected beings teach other resurrected beings. <laughs> Islam Belief in angels is fundamental to Islam. The Quranic word for angel Arabic, milk malik, derives either from Malaka, meaning, he controlled, due to their power to govern different affairs assigned to them, or from the root either from LK, LK or MLK with the broad meaning of a messenger, just like its counterparts in Hebrew malak and Greek angelos. Unlike their Hebrew counterpart, the term is exclusively used for heavenly spirits of the divine world, but not for human messengers. The Quran refers to both angelic and human messengers as Rasul. Instead, the Quran is the principal source for the Islamic concept of angels. Some of them, such as Gabriel and Michael, are mentioned by name in the Quran, others are only referred to by their function. In Hadith literature, angels are often assigned to only one specific phenomena. Angels play a significant role in Miraj literature, where Muhammad encounters several angels during his journey through the heavens. Further angels have often been featured in Islamic eschatology, Islamic theology and Islamic philosophy. Duties assigned to angels include, for example, communicating revelations from God, glorifying God, recording every person's actions, and taking a person's soul at the time of death. In Islam, just like in Judaism and Christianity, angels are often represented in anthropomorphic forms combined with supernatural images, such as wings, being of great size or wearing heavenly articles. The Quran describes them as messengers with wings two or three or four pairs he god adds to creation as he pleases
Common characteristics for angels are their missing needs for bodily desires, such as eating and drinking. Their lack of affinity to material desires is also expressed by their creation from light. Angels of mercy are created from nur, cold light, in opposition to the angels of punishment created from nar, hot light. Muslims do not generally share the perceptions of angelic pictorial depictions, such as those found in Western art. Although believing in angels remain one of six articles of faith in Islam, one cannot find a dogmatic angelology in Islamic tradition. Despite this, scholars had discussed the role of angels from specific canonical events, such as the Miraj, and Quranic verses. Even if they are not in focus, they have been featured in folklore, philosophy debates and systematic theology. While in classical Islam, widespread notions were accepted as canonical, there is a tendency in contemporary scholarship to reject much material about angels, like calling the angel of death by the name Azrael, Ibn Sina, who drew upon the Neoplatonistic emanation cosmology of al-Farabi, developed an angelological hierarchy of intellects, which are created by the One. Therefore, the first creation by God was the supreme archangel followed by other archangels, who are identified with lower intellects. From these intellects again, emanated lower angels or moving spheres, from which in turn, emanated other intellects until it reaches the intellect, which reigns over the souls. The tenth intellect is responsible for bringing material forms into being and illuminating the minds. In folk Islam, individual angels may be evoked in exorcism rites, whose names are engraved in talismans or amulets. Some modern scholars have emphasized a metaphorical reinterpretation of the concept of angels. Topic: <laughs> Bahai faith. In his book of Certitude Bahá'u'lláh, founder of the Bahá'í Faith, describes angels as people who have consumed, with the fire of the love of God, all human traits and limitations, and have clothed themselves with angelic attributes and have become endowed with the attributes of the spiritual. Abdul Baha describes angels as the confirmations of God and his celestial powers, and as blessed beings who have severed all ties with this nether world, and been released from the chains of self, and revealers of God's abounding grace. The Baha'i writings also refer to the concourse on high, an angelic host, and the maid of heaven of Baha'u'llah's vision. <laughs> Satanism. The Satanic Temple heavily promotes what it calls literary Satanism, the idea of Satan and fallen angels as literary figures and metaphors. In particular, the novel Revolt of the Angels by Anatole France is seen as an example of this tradition. In it, a guardian angel by the name Arcade organizes a revolt against heaven after learning about science. Topic. Zoroastrianism In Zoroastrianism there are different angel-like figures. For example, each person has one guardian angel, called Fravashi. They patronize human beings and other creatures, and also manifest God's energy. The Amisha Spentas have often been regarded as angels, although there is no direct reference to them conveying messages, but are rather emanations of Ahura Mazda, wise lord, god. They initially appeared in an abstract fashion and then later became personalized, associated with diverse aspects of the divine creation. Topic: <laughs> Neoplatonism. In the commentaries of Proclus 4th century, under Christian rule, on the Timaeus of Plato, Proclus uses the terminology of angelic agulikos, and angel agulos, in relation to metaphysical beings. 
According to Aristotle, just as there is a prime mover, so, too, must there be spiritual secondary movers. Topic. Sikhism The poetry of the holy scripture of the Sikhs, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib, figuratively mentions a messenger or angel of death, sometimes as Yam, Yam and sometimes as Azrael. Adrail. Jama Jataru na Lagai U Baujalu Tarai Tarasi The messenger of death will not touch you, in this way, you shall cross over the terrifying world ocean, carrying others across with you. Sri Guru Granth Sahib, Sari Raag, 1st Mel, p. 22. Ajarilu Yaru Baid Jisu Tara Adharu Azrael, the messenger of death, is the friend of the human being who has your support, Lord. Sri Guru Granth Sahib, Tilling, 5th Mel, 3rd House, p. 724. In a similar vein, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib talks of a figurative chitar, Sitra and Gupat. Gupatu Sitra Gupatu Sabha Likate Laka Bhagata Jana Kau Drizati Na Pekka Chitar and Gupat, the recording angels of the conscious and the unconscious, write the accounts of all mortal beings, but they cannot even see the Lord's humble devotees. Sri Guru Granth Sahib, AASAA, 5th Mel, Panch Pada, p. 393. However, Sikhism has never had a literal system of angels, preferring guidance without explicit appeal to supernatural orders or beings. <laughs> Esotericism Hermetic Kabbalah According to the Kabbalah as described by the Golden Dawn there are ten archangels, each commanding one of the choir of angels and corresponding to one of the Sephirot. It is similar to the Jewish angelic hierarchy. Theosophy In the teachings of the Theosophical Society, devas are regarded as living either in the atmospheres of the planets of the solar system planetary angels or inside the sun solar angels and they help to guide the operation of the processes of nature such as the process of evolution and the growth of plants, their appearance is reputedly like colored flames about the size of a human. It is believed by theosophists that devas can be observed when the third eye is activated. Some, but not most, devas originally incarnated as human beings. It is believed by theosophists that nature spirits, elementals, gnomes, undines, sylphs, and salamanders, and fairies can be also be observed when the third eye is activated. It is maintained by theosophists that these less evolutionarily developed beings have never been previously incarnated as humans. They are regarded as being on a separate line of spiritual evolution called the Diva evolution. Eventually, as their souls advance as they reincarnate, it is believed they will incarnate as devas. It is asserted by theosophists that all of the above mentioned beings possess etheric bodies that are composed of etheric matter, a type of matter finer and more pure that is composed of smaller particles than ordinary physical plane matter. Topic. Brahma Kamaris The Brahma Kamaris uses the term angel to refer to a perfect, or complete state of the human being, which they believe can be attained through a connection with God. Topic. In art According to mainstream Christian theology, angels are holy spiritual beings and therefore do not eat, excrete or have sex, and have no gender. Although their different roles, such as warriors for some archangels, may suggest a human gender, Christian artists were careful not to given them specific gender attributes, at least until the 19th century, when some acquire breasts for example, in an address during a general audience of 6 August 1986, entitled, 
Angels participate in the history of salvation. Pope John Paul II explained that T he angels have no body even if, in particular circumstances, they reveal themselves under visible forms because of their mission for the good of people. Christian art perhaps reflects the descriptions in Revelation chapter 4 verses 6 to 8 of the four living creatures Greek, ta tesara zoia and the descriptions in the Hebrew Bible of cherubim and seraphim the chayot in Ezekiel's Merkabah vision and the seraphim of Isaiah. However, while cherubim and seraphim have wings in the Bible, no angel is mentioned as having wings. The earliest known Christian image of an angel— in the Cubicolo dell'Annunziazione in the Catacomb of Priscilla mid-3rd century, is without wings. In that same period, representations of angels on sarcophagi, lamps and reliquaries also show them without wings, as for example the angel in the sacrifice of Isaac seen in the sarcophagus of Junius Bassus although the side view of the sarcophagus shows winged angelic figures. The earliest known representation of angels with wings is on the prince's sarcophagus, attributed to the time of Theodosius I, 379 to 395, discovered at Sarigazel, near Istanbul, in the 1930s. From that period on, Christian art has represented angels mostly with wings, as in the cycle of mosaics in the Basilica of Saint Mary Major, 432 to 440. Four and six winged angels, drawn from the higher grades of angels especially cherubim and seraphim and often showing only their faces and wings, are derived from Persian art and are usually shown only in heavenly contexts, as opposed to performing tasks on earth. They often appear in the pendentives of church domes or semi-domes. Prior to the Judeo-Christian tradition, in the Greek world the goddess Nike and the gods Eros and Thanatos were also depicted in human-like form with wings. St. John Chrysostom explained the significance of angels' wings. They manifest a nature's sublimity. That is why Gabriel is represented with wings. Not that angels have wings, but that you may know that they leave the heights and the most elevated dwelling to approach human nature. Accordingly, the wings attributed to these powers have no other meaning than to indicate the sublimity of their nature. Angels are typically depicted in Mormon art as having no wings based on a quote from Joseph Smith, An angel of God never has wings. In terms of their clothing, angels, especially the Archangel Michael, were depicted as military-style agents of God and came to be shown wearing late antique military uniform. This uniform could be the normal military dress, with a tunic to about the knees, an armor breastplate and teruges, but was often the specific dress of the bodyguard of the Byzantine emperor, with a long tunic and the loras, the long gold and jeweled pallium restricted to the imperial family and their closest guards. The basic military dress was shown in Western art into the Baroque period and beyond see Rennie picture above, and up to the present day in Eastern Orthodox icons. Other angels came to be conventionally depicted in long robes, and in the later Middle Ages they often wear the vestments of a deacon, a cope over a dalmatic. This costume was used especially for Gabriel in Annunciation scenes, for example the Annunciation in Washington by Jan van Eyck. Some types of angels are described as possessing more unusual or frightening attributes, such as the fiery bodies of the seraphim, and the wheel-like structures of the equals <laughs> See also